together on seclosounds.org Your listening station This week's show is a special about Washington state in the USA my guest, Geome Post, tells us all we need to know about visiting in the state, the different regions, and of course Seattle. That's all coming up on the John Gwynn Travel Show on seclosounds.org. Hello, and welcome to the John Gwynn Travel Show on seclosounds.org. My guest this week is Geome Post from First PR. This company represents the tourism board for Washington State in London. I recorded this interview earlier, and we talked about quite a lot about Washington State, what there is to see and do. And some people do get confused between Washington State and Washington, D.C. And as a lot of places in America are named after places in in the U.K., I wanted to know whether Washington State was named after a, a small village or was it named after George Washington? And we're going to start the conversation with Jiome giving us the answer to that. It is named after uh, George Washington, so the first president of the uh, U.S.A., um, it was uh, back in the uh, back in the middle of the 19th century um, when the western part of the Washington Territory had been ceded by Britain um, as a settlement of the Oregon boundary dispute. Um, so it was supposed to be named the Columbia Territory, um, mm-hmm. and then they thought about it um they already had uh, columbia as in district of columbia um and they didn't have anything with george washington to honor the first president so they named it uh, as washington state after george washington so not washington in west sussex (laughs) okay i'm sure they're disappointed down there (laughs) you've already said that it's on the western side of the uh, usa so how do you get there, and how long does it take? Well, yeah, it's it's um, the general uh, geography is the Pacific Northwest, uh, so it's very close to the Canadian border uh, for Seattle, and you would uh, get there. We've got two direct flights now. There used to be a monopoly by British Airways, which is a very good flight from uh, from Heathrow to Seattle using the polar route so it's not as far as you think it is and it's actually just a little bit more than nine hours from London to Seattle direct Uh, we've got a second uh, direct flight now this year which has started in April um, and it's with Delta Airlines so Seattle from London actually closer uh, then Seattle, uh, London to San Francisco, which takes 11 hours or so. Um, there's also an indirect flight via Reykjavik using Iceland Air, which I quite like. Mm-hmm. They've got great fares. Um, there's lots of similarities between Iceland and uh, Washington State or Seattle Pacific Northwest. They've got the volcanoes. They've got a, you know the same taste of music, etc. Rock mm-hmm. bands, etc. Um, and if you use Iceland Air, um, you can uh, you can stay in, uh, in Reykjavik, I think, for seven nights on the on the same ticket. So uh, it's a uh, it's a nice uh, it's a nice combination. But two direct flights and um, uh, nine hours for the time, um, and and then you also have all the different options where you go via Chicago or via New York City if you would want this. Mm-hmm. Nine hours is a lot less than I was imagining it because of where it is. It's about the same to uh, Cancun, so it's not really that far away, is it? It's not that far away. Yeah, you know, when you think that uh, you know, if you fly from London to Miami, it's probably the same flight time um, than to go uh, to Seattle. So uh, it is, uh, it is, it is a good option. Okay. Once you're at Washington State and you want to visit the whole state, you don't want to stay in Seattle. Is it easy to drive around or are you best off taking internal flights? Yeah, I think um, that's, um, again, um, this Pacific Northwest region um, is is very, very much um, for people who want to drive. 
you you need to go uh, on the road. It, it's perfect for road trips. There are lots of different itineraries that you can do in Washington State from Seattle, um, but you wouldn't need a car. Um, there are different regions, but but yeah, it's it's very um, it's one of the best uh, places to. Um, to drive around and, uh, and explore because it's very famous for the outdoors. It's uh, it's very um, uh, it's very scenic. Mm-hmm. There are there are um, internal flights as well. Uh, you know, just thinking about visitors who don't want to drive in the, uh, when they go to the U.S. Uh, there are plenty of different options. Um, when you're in Seattle, there are. Uh, train journeys between Seattle and Vancouver, British Columbia, Seattle and um, Portland in Oregon. And then there's um, internal flights from Seattle to Walla Walla, uh, which is in the wine country in the southeastern part of the state. And there's also um, internal flights, uh, which are very popular, on a, on a seaplane, on a float plane, from Seattle uh, downtown to the San Juan Islands, for example, or um, Van- you know, Victoria on Vancouver Island, or towards the Olympic Peninsula. So quite a, a fair, a fair bit of options. But uh, my my favorite, uh, my preference would go for for a road trip. Gary Fitz here, every Monday, 10 o'clock. Coming up, we've got Eric and Ernie. Join me here on Seclo Sounds. In your smile. It's from 1975, Eric and Ernie were four... Uh, uh, Gary, Gary, uh, it's what? not Eric and Ernie, it's Earl and Ernie, you know, uh, the Cape Brothers, Union Man. Oh, I see. Gary Fitz here, every Monday, 10 o'clock. Earl and Ernie. listening to the John Gwynn Travel Show on setclosesounds.org If you enjoy listening to local radio and want to influence the quality of our programmes, we'd like you to join our scrutiny panel. You'll play a key role in helping us deliver the professional broadcast service that listeners will demand from our expected transition to FM status during 2015. If you can spare a few hours each month, you'll be responsible for reviewing programmes to ensure they meet the highest standards of production and content. No technical experience is necessary. Please contact john at setclosesounds.org for more details. My guest this week is Guillaume Post, who's telling us all about Washington State. Later in the show, we'll be finding out more about Seattle and various parts of uh, Washington. But at the moment, we're still covering the basics. And one of the things that is very important when you go away on holiday is what the weather is like. It is uh, quite similar to what we have in uh, in the UK, in London, South East, in the winter. Uh, probably November through to March, we're going to have a similar weather. Um, but then, but then it's very, very different uh, from about May till the. End of uh, September, beginning of October, they do have um, a very, very good weather. Um, it gets uh, it gets pretty hot in July and August, you know, 30, 35 degrees, uh, which is very nice. They've got an Indian summer, so it goes, you know, at the end of September, you could still be in a T-shirt on the, you know, it's it's very uh, it's very nice at the middle of the day. Um, I've been there a few times and uh, and it's been uh, it's been really fabulous. So uh, and it does coincide with the uh, cruise season. Um, so yeah, the from beginning of May to the end of September is uh, is a very it's it's the best time to go if you wanted to choose a, a good um, you know uh, the summer months get pretty busy, but mm-hmm. uh, it's the best time to go. Yeah. Okay. You need some layers, uh, definitely, for the early morning and uh, and evenings. If you go beginning of the season or in, end of the season, um, as I said, in the summer it's uh, it gets pretty hot. Um, but of course, because uh, Washington State is very much about the outdoors, uh, you're going to go hike up some mountains, or you know, so you you're going to need um, you know a couple of layers and some good uh, hiking boots. Okay. 
you've said earlier that it's very scenic. And when I think about uh, Washington State, apart from the rain, I think about mountains and St. Helens. Is it mostly mountains with a few cities dotted around, or is there more to the state than that? Um, there is there is more. <laughs> I guess you could have uh, uh, imagined I would say that. No, there's, there's a lot more than... Um, than the mountains, but uh, the first thing that you will see from Seattle, if you go up the Space Needle, for example, or on the um, on the hill, is going to be the uh, the shape of Mount Rainier in the background. So uh, Seattle, um, from Seattle, you will see mountains to the west. Mm-hmm. If you if you look over the Puget Sounds and Elliott Bay, you will see the mountains that are on the Olympic Peninsula, uh, which I call the Olympic Mountain Range, or the Olympic Mountains. Um, then you will see to the south Mount Rainier, um, and to the east you will see, uh, southeast from Mount Rainier, and east you will see the, uh, the other uh, peaks of the Cascade Mountain Range. Uh, so there is uh, quite a quite a few quite a few mountains, um, and that's probably going to be the biggest um, you know geographical divide uh, between the sort of coastline where Seattle is and the rest of the state. So it's sort of a north to south uh, dividing line. Mm-hmm. So yes, there, there's a, a little bit more than mountains. In, uh, there's lots of islands, uh, and the most famous archipelago um, is the San Juan Islands, for example. So um, that's that's also something very very typical to uh, very specific to uh, Western state. Um, and on the other side of the Cascade Range, then you go into uh, the northeast and central, which is pretty agricultural, and the southeast part of the state, which is a wine country, which also is something that people don't really associate with uh, the Pacific Northwest in general. You're listening to the John Gwynn Travel Show on seclosounds.org. This is Seclo Sounds. Join us every Wednesday at 7 p.m. for one hour in the company of Harry and Edna on the wires, exploring all aspects of the vintage scene and playing tip-top gramophone tunes. Harry and Edna on the wireless, Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on seclosounds.org. Jolly good. Hi, blessings to each and every one of you. Join me, Darren Hoy, with the Reggae Takeover Show for two hours of the finest reggae vibes, each and every Wednesday, 9 through to 11 p.m., here on Seclo Sounds. Don't miss out on your weekly Sunshine Fix, featuring Roots, Rude Boy, Dub, Lover's Rock, Scar, One Drop, and much, much more. So go on, give your sound system a treat. Join me, wind down low, and skank the night away. One love. That's Wednesdays, 9 through to 11 p.m., live on Seclo Sounds. You're listening to the John Gwynn Travel Show on SecloSounds.org. My guest this week is Jeone Post from First PR. He's telling us all about Washington State. Later in the show, we're going to find out about the wildlife in uh, around Washington and something surprising under a bridge. But in the last section, Geome started to split Washington State into different areas. We're now going to find out more specifically about each area to find out what there is to see and do when you pop over. Northeast would be where you go to Spokane. Uh, that's where you will find the Palouse Falls. Uh, it's probably some an area where you would go to... Um, from Seattle, you will go um, on Highway 20 across the Cascades um, through the North Cascades National Park. Um, that had been rated as, you know, one of the top three uh, scenic road trips, best scenic road trips in the USA by um, uh, National Geographic Travel Magazine a few years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's it's an area if you 